not. Oh! <laughs> we are going to do a giveaway. So in a previous video, we compared battery handheld chainsaws and what was on the market at the time. And in that video, we only had three products. We had the Milwaukee M12. We did. The GTA 26, which we've got again. And also the cheapest product we could find on Amazon, which is the 36 quid. Mm. You gave it a bit of a hard time, mm. to be quite honest, because I understand some of the comments. And I mean, there's been a lot of comments on that video saying that, oh, the, you know, the small one was okay for just small jobs, which, yeah, okay, fair enough, it probably mm. was. But now we have brought you a full-on lineup of new products to the market current products from brands you know brands you don't and we're bigger well excited and better definitely bigger and better so brands we've got to test today are from still husvana makita pelenlenk pelenk <laughs> pelenk we've never had pelenk on the channel before so it's excited to try the Not pelenk -link. pelenk, <laughs> pelenk. <laughs> Yard Force, which is our budget tool today, only £99, and Milwaukee, but now this time we've got the M18 version and also one from Alka, which has got a special feature on it we're very impressed with. So, should we get going? Let's check yeah. them out. Let's do it. And today, guys, we are going to do a giveaway. Yes, if you'd like a chance to win a Machinery Nation and Oregon Collaboration t-shirt, then please pop a comment below in this video. Doesn't matter what the comment says. It could just be hi, or if you want to go to town. Or no. Or low, high or low, <laughs> or leave us an essay, it's absolutely fine. But for your chance to win an Oregon and Machinery Nation collaboration t-shirt, pop a comment below and then we'll let you know in our community tab. We'll not put it in the comments, we'll not give you any links, we'll let you know in our community tab who the winner is. Tested by Machinery Nation. From Yard Force, we have the LSC13, it's 20 volt, has a 12 centimetre bar and chain, comes with a 2 amp hour battery and charger and costs £99.99. £99. From Husqvarna, we have the Aspire P5 dash P4A. It's 18 volt, has a 12 centimetre bar and chain, comes with a Bosch 2.5 battery and charger and costs £164.99. From Alco we have the CSM1815. It's 18 volt, has a 15 centimetre bar and chain, integral oil tank, comes with a Bosch compatible 2.5 amp hour battery, charger and carry case and costs £169. From Still we have the GTA26. It's 11 volt, has a 10 centimetre bar and chain, comes with a 2.5 amp hour battery, charger and carry case and costs £169. From Makita we have the DUC 101. It's 18 volt, has a 10 centimetre bar and chain, integral oil tank, comes with a 5 amp hour battery and charger and costs £299. From Milwaukee we have the M18 hatchet. It's 18 volt, has a 20 centimetre bar and chain, integral oil tank, comes with two 5.5 amp hour batteries and multi-charger and costs £529.99. And from Pelenk, we have the Celian M12 with a 15 centimetre bar and chain and claiming to be the equivalent of a 30cc petrol saw. Automatic chain tensioner with an integral oil tank. This costs for the tool only £1,124.40. Thank you to Oregon for supplying the oil and PPE for this video. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I right up, didn't I? So what's the main differences between the seven saws? And we've got three in this pile and four in that pile. The difference being that these four have integral oil tanks, whereas these three, you have to manually put the oil on prior to sawing and during. So for these, you've actually got a separate oil tank so you can put the oil in and they'll pump it through. With the addition of the Alco, which has actually got a priming bulb on the side of it, so you can actually prime the oil through yourself to pump it onto the chain. Right, it's so the first cutting test. We've got a nice three inch by three inch piece of softwood, which Josh is modeling extremely well. And I'm going to do a timed cut with a Oregon handsaw to see how fast that is. And then Josh is going to do a one cut each with every single one of the small mini chainsaws to see which one's quickest. Cool. Well, let's, let's do it. it. Let's go. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Oh, what a weapon. Highly recommended. Not saying that because it says Oregon on my t-shirt, I promise. Do you want to use the motorised versions? Let's do it. Cool. That's the first up to Yard Force. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> and there we have it. Lube them up. So Husqvarna up next. I did do a video on the full Aspire range earlier in the year, so definitely check that out. Three, two, one, go! Well, that's through. Are we right, all right? Alco at the steady. Fingers ready. Three, two, one, go. That was 
impressive. That's right. Yeah. That went through right, right, didn't it? Very good. I reckon still were the first people to bring one of these out, weren't they? I think they were, yeah. And it's the original one. Mm. Mm, let's see how good it is against the others then. Three, two, one, go! Smooth, yeah, smooth cut that. And now time for probably one of the newest ones to the market. Mm. Yeah, right, Makita. Three, two, one, go. There's some torque there. That was impressive. There is some torque there. Slightly bigger chain on that one as well. Right, looks like. Now, now for the Milwaukee. We've done the M12. This is the M18. Let's see how it goes. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> There's no stopping that. No, there isn't. Do you want me to turn you on? Turn me on. Mm. Oh, that hurt. Tickled the belly then. Oh, hang on. Oh. <laughs> As Josh would say, it's a palelelelank. Palelelelank. Palelelank. And are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus <that> wept. Woo! <laughs> I wasn't expecting no. that. No. Can I do it again? Yeah, please do. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's nice. That is one. talky. Woo! That talks more than you. It does. <laughs> oh, look at him. The muck waffle over her. So now we're on about torque, we're actually going to do the torque test, and James is going to force these products into a bit of wood and see which one falters first or which one has got the most torque. So, first up, we have got the yard force. We have, yeah, so in the name of science and all that, we'll try and make it as even as possible. It won't be even, but we'll get a good idea for it anyway. Okay. So for the sake of science, that's actually quite interesting, actually. Mm. Because although the pelenk, when Josh done the cutting, that seemed like a mass of torque, torque. It hasn't actually gone in that far. So we thought we might just grab a ruler and see, you know, as, as I had it, I just pushed down exactly the same force in, I say exactly, the same force on both. Just pushed it into the timber to see how far it cut. To be fair, the hard force surprised me straight away. I thought that was just going to yeah, stop straight yeah, on the top. Really well. So what, let's have a measure then, Joshy. Yeah, 22 mil for the yard force. Mm-hmm, moving along. And then next up is the Husfana, which we've got a 20 mil. And then it was the Alco. Yeah, the Alco at 18 mil, well, we're getting lower. Mm -hmm. And then we've got still the, the Steel, which is probably 6 mil. So that's quite low, but that is the smallest. It's the smallest capacity smallest battery. Capacity. Right Small, smallest battery and smallest voltage as well. And then we have the, that's the interesting one, the Makita. I thought mm -hmm. that was going to mm. go all the way. Because that was quick cutting, that. That was quick cutting. It was quick cutting. And we've got probably, again, probably about 8 mil on mm -hmm. there, so that's quite surprisingly low. But then the Milwaukee went, just went to just push it in and it just ate it. To be fair, I could have probably gone all the way through, but I stopped so we could do this. And we are at 90, 96 mil all the way through. And then we've got the... We've actually got two cuts then, here. Then the, yeah, because we've done two Maybe cuts on the Pelink. We, really? The mm. Pelink, I thought, again, was going to do the same as Milwaukee and go all the way through. And it didn't. It's only gone in, what, 15 mil? So... Yeah, interesting results on the torque test. Right, so there's one thing with battery chainsaws all over I find very, very annoying, is that they are quite whiny, they're quite screamy, and they don't have the nicest of sounds. So I thought, well, I'll get my little decibel meter out, and we can test it from a meter away to see which one is quietest and which one is loudest. Let's crack on. Yard force, 92.3 decibels. Husfana, 86.3 decibels. The Alco, 92 decibels. The Steel, 91.5 decibels. The Makita, 95.9 decibels. The Milwaukee, 92.9 decibels. The Pelenk, 92.4 decibels. Now time for hardwood and we've got some oak. Oh yes, can these little saws cope with oak? Let's find out. It's much easier to lube with two of you. The yeah, force was definitely quicker than that. Wow. Mm.
knot. Did you find a knot? I don't know. Don't know. Didn't seem like it was running as fast. It no. slowed right down, didn't it? It's got some serious torque because it's pulling you, isn't it? Yeah, it actually it is. pulls you out your hand. So the next test up is the true workable weight of the product. Now that is filled with oil and with the advised battery from the manufacturer. Now the Plenic is obviously usable with the backpack battery. So you've got the umbilical cord. So what we'll do is we'll put the backpack, ba backpack battery on our back. We'll hang it on. So we'll get then the true weight of the usable machine. So that when you're drunk. Mm. <laughs> so the first up is the Yard Force. 1.6 kilos. So next up is the Husqvarna and that's weighing in at 2.1 kilos. And the Alco, which is the first one with oil in it, 2.1 kilos. Oh, two kilos. <laughs> <laughs> but still doesn't have a wraparound handle, so hopefully, yeah, that'll work. There you go. That's right, we've got right. it, we've got it. Uh, that's lightest so far, isn't it? 1.5 kilos. Makita in at 1.9 kilos. Mm. That's lighter than I thought it was going to be. Mm. The Milwaukee's got his own little lanyard Look at that. clip. 3.4 kilos. <sighs> Heavier so far. It is. Right, so Josh has got the backpack on, so we've got the sort of the true weight with the cord, and it's got a lanyard on it as well, so I don't need the bungee, but this hole on the lanyard clip fits exactly the same size as our scale. Look at that. That's satisfaction, that is. And we are weighing in exactly two kilos. <sighs> Ooh, mm. huh, respectable. Right, next test. So the one big issue with battery products is how long do they last? And that is always a big question when asked by customers. Now in this test, we've got a slab of oak and we're gonna run through each product and see how long they last. Now this isn't about how many cuts we can make out of it, just literally how long they can run. And being an oak, hopefully, theoretically, they're not gonna last as long as no. they would if you're cutting softwood. No. But it's a good test to see which one lasts longer than the other mm -hmm. one really is. So that's what we're aiming at. But the Pelenk is a little bit different because there is a massive backpack battery on that. And to be quite honest, I think the run time is like 10 days <laughs> it's not but it's a lot of hours and so we're not going to keep cutting with it until then because you can get the battery holster so you can clip a battery onto your side of the pelink and still have the umbilical cord to it instead of having the backpack so some slightly lots of different variants on the pelink you can go for but that's for you to research for yourself we're just here to show you how well it can work one yard force one husvana one each end see how we go so all batteries have been charged back up again and the safety things have been taken off the yard force and we've changed the carving bar on the pelink just so that we can go straight through the timber the other saws shouldn't be a problem so then we haven't got any restriction on how deep we're going. So yeah, let's do it. Ready? Ready. Three, two, one, go! And that's it. Yard force is done. He's done, he is. All right, Alco. Out. I'm out on the Alco as well. Out on the Alco. I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm out. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> out on the steel as well. Hello, he did he finish with a bang. That was intense on the hands. It was. There's no getting away from that. Oh, I'm quite surprised by something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Husky just kept going and going and going, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. But that has, if you buy that as a kit, I think it's got a 2.5 amp hour battery, whereas we've got a 4 amp hour battery on it today. But that, the Milwaukee, I reckon that done six cuts all the way down through yeah. on the 5.5 amp. That mm -hmm. just roared through it. But I'd be careful because I was getting close to the headstock. It was about an inch away there, so getting a bit close. But yeah, 
That is cool. Right, let's look at the results and round it up. We have the results. Oh yes, we do. From each test, we have now written down to see what is on top and what is on the bottom. So let's go through them individually. So first up, we've got the decibel rating and the Makita is actually the loudest at 95.9 decibels. And we've got the Husqvarna at 86.3 decibels, making it the quietest. So the weight, and not surprisingly, the still being the smallest item, comes in at 1.5 kilograms, being the lightest in the range. And the heaviest is the Milwaukee, coming in at 3.4 kilos. It is a beast, though, it and is. it's got the power. Oh, yeah. All right, so the most amazing news is that I am faster with a handsaw than four of these tools. How surprising is that? But then I don't think I'd keep that up over a number of cuts. So that's the difference. That's where it comes in. But Josh has the result. The, the Plenek in softwood is 2.16 seconds. Pew, 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 pew. Whereas the Husqvarna is 9.22 seconds, making it the slowest. And I've kept hold of the Plenek because it's also fastest in hardwood, coming in at 5.21 seconds. Whereas the steel was the slowest at 15.18 seconds. So battery run times, yes, the most asked question of them all, how long will they last on one battery? And well, there's so many different ways you could test this and so many inaccurate ways you could test it. I don't think there's one perfect way of testing that because no. everyone's different, everyone pushes harder, everyone's cutting something different. So we used the hardest thing you could possibly do by cutting oak with one of these mini chainsaws, which probably isn't the best thing. And it was thicker than the bars most of the time. So yeah, we just had to do it as quickly as possible. And I think that worked. Mm -hmm. We, it was about 22 minutes of cutting in yeah. total of all the saws, so they're thereabouts. And it was a still that used its battery the quickest at 2 minutes 12 seconds. But if you imagine cutting branches or small sticks or pruning for 2 minutes 12 seconds, that's a lot of sticks, it isn't is. it? It is. It is a lot of sticks. Yeah. But the Husqvarna actually lasted the longest. It did. And it was 16 minutes and 8 seconds. Yeah. Now that is really impressive. But it is worth noting that it has got the 4 amp hour battery in it, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 2.5. Which is advertised. Which is yeah. advertised with yeah. it. Yeah. The 2.5 is actually fitted in the Alco. The Alco and the Husqvarna work on the Bosch battery platform, which is the Power for All Alliance. I can now take the Alco battery and put it in. <laughs> there we go. So that's the Alco battery in the Husqvarna, and vice versa, I can put the Husqvarna battery into the Alco. And there we go. So both still work. And obviously the range then is huge, huge. isn't it? Yeah, because you can utilise tools from every manufacturer that are within this range. It is all the ba Bosch batteries, as James says. So it gives you access to hundreds and hundreds of products. But obviously the Pelink. Yeah, dark is, horse in the room. Really, dark horse, because, that, because having a backpack battery or even the hip battery that you can get, which we haven't got here today, <clears throat> It lasts, what did I say, 10 days? <laughs> well, within the couple of minutes that we were using it, we used 1% battery. <laughs> it did, it went down so to So we would have been there for hours and hours cutting, yeah. cutting and cutting. So yeah. it is very hard to gauge that, but if you're a professional user using it all day long, I should imagine you've probably got a day's worth of work in that, yeah, if not more. Yeah. So the Yard Force, the more budget one that we've got here today, mm -hmm. and it's be, yeah, not quite as budget as the one that was in the previous video, yeah. But I think it's got its definite use, you know, for a domestic user just wanting to do some light pruning. I think it'd be... Feels well built, doesn't it? It does. It's, yeah. it's, it's all there. I, I don't know what other products you can put on that battery range. It doesn't have an oil tank. But one thing I did notice when we're doing the long cuts, the heat that was coming off there was... Mm. It was the... I could feel it through my chainsaw gloves. It was hot. So longevity would be the questionable bit. But just for some basic pruning. Odd domestic reuse, very, very good. Yeah, we've just got a one-off job, fine. So next up we have the Husqvarna. Now the Husqvarna, as we mentioned, it can be used on a lot of other battery platforms because it's using the Bosch battery. So really, really universal. The other thing we do like about it is obviously the runtime. It was really impressive with a four amp hour battery. Obviously still coupled up with a 2.5, you're still gonna get about half that sort of runtime anyway. So you're gonna be talking about eight minutes. So really, really good. Everyone knows Husqvarna brand. They've got a load of other range of tools in this battery platform as well which is called a spire yeah and although it wasn't the fastest in the cuts as the others you've got the battery runtime yeah so it's sort of a way up between the two and to be honest the amount of use we did give it it didn't get that warm no. i mean it did get warm mm -hmm. but not like the r force but no. yeah good all round solid bit of kit solid bit of kit now the alco is probably the one i'm most surprised about because it's the, well, the price tag of the steel and the husqvarna very very similar prices but this one has the oil priming bulb mm -hmm. so you can actually oil your chain without having to do it manually now i think that's a big big game changer Definitely. i think it is for the similar sort of price and you're running on the bosch platform mm -hmm. so you've got that advantage to be able to use it in lots of other products you've got the battery charge indicator on the side you've got the oil tank you've got easy chain tensioner it's got a decent sized bar on it yep. as well and yep. yeah i 
quite pleasantly surprised with the whole tool. So, the Steel GTA 26. Now, we did review this in our last video and it did come out really, really well. And it is a nice ergonomic, very easy to use product. You can use it with one hand, whereas the other ones we did feel that some of the times you did want to use it two-handed just mm -hmm. for the control, but this one is really, really nice. <laughs> so these were the first guys to bring out a handheld pruner and they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Running obviously only the 10.8 volt battery, so it's a small mm -hmm. capacity battery, which is the smallest in the whole range, but it did perform really, really well. Mm -hmm. And it is obviously used for domestic use, but if perhaps they did bring out something with a bigger battery, AK range, yeah, yeah it would probably be then up around the realms of your Makita and your Morky and Power mm -hmm. and longevity. Mm -hmm. I hope they don't lose that from the range because no. I would say that's the most comfortable one to use out of all the ones we've used today. It's just nice, it's a nice size, it's easy to use. Yes, it hasn't got the battery runtime. Mm -hmm. Yes, it doesn't have the speed, but for a comfort small tool, amazing. Yeah, and they have obviously got other tools that run this battery as well. All in all, nice. Right, Makita, and it's the first one with an automatic oiler. Mm -hmm. So obviously the Alco has the priming pump, but this one has an automatic oiler, so it just oils the chain automatically. You haven't got to think about doing that. And obviously Makita's battery range on that 18 volt system is huge. Mm -hmm. the, the possibilities are endless with what other tools you can do on it. And it's probably one of the newest ones to the market that we've got here today. And oh yeah, it cuts well. It's got a reasonably good battery runtime, and you can obviously, Makita's got lots of different sizes of batteries as well, so yeah, yeah and I, I think like it. being that it's Makita as well, obviously if you're a carpenter or someone like that, that is perhaps doing little joints and you want to just trim off, you know, edges of planks and stuff like that, that's... You want to use that for carpentry? Yeah, crack on. <laughs> You see my some, skills. I was thinking of some dovetail joints with that. <laughs> yeah, right. So next up, we got the Morky. And it is the heaviest at the range, but it is probably one of the most powerful, and it? it? does give you some grunt. There's no getting away from that. Again, a bit like the Makita, you've got an endless amount of tools that you can fit this battery on. This is the 5.5 high amp power battery, so it gives you that bit of extra grunt, doesn't it? And then the kit, you get two of them. Yeah, it is quite pricey, so it's probably not for your normal domestic use, but for pro use or high-end domestic country estates that sort of stuff mm -hmm. perfect tool for the job this is designed really to be used two-handed as well, well that, so it yeah, is it's definitely the one that we're, we're sort of saying you have got to put a little bit more force down when you're cutting the bigger stuff as well you've obviously got the automatic chain lubrication on that one like the makita as well got the bigger guide bar and it's worth noting these ones have the bigger gauge chain as well so if you are cutting wood that's slightly rougher it is going to be uh, have more longevity, longevity. Should we say, on the yep. chain yeah, so definitely. if you hit anything you're not going to have to sharpen it quite so often but mm -hmm. all in all fantastic product Really, really nice. They brought out an M18 range opposed to the M12. Which for the lighter, more domestic user, yeah. the M12 was probably the one to go for. It really. We know yeah. that's got an awful lot of power awful itself. Awful lot of power. So to put that one up against the M12, I'd say they're definitely two different tools. Mm -hmm. That is just more for heavier U2 to users, whereas the M12 is for more lighter duty yeah. users. Definitely. So the Palenque, or as Josh wants to call it, a Palenque-Lenque. palenque lenque palenque But no, that is an absolute weapon, it isn't is. it? It is. That is, that surprised me. You might have saw my face in the video when Josh took that one cut down through and it done it in, what, 2.12 seconds? like three or four seconds quicker mm. than any of the mm. others and they claimed that this was the equivalent of a 30 cc chainsaw mm -hmm. we we agree <laughs> and, it, and it's actually when you put it in the wood you can actually feel the power because it's yeah. pulling it pulling you in pulling you in as like well. you would on like a 60 cc chainsaw when yeah. you put that into wood you feel it you sort of your body pulls forward that's got the same feel to it as the, to the, rest the only surprising thing I would say with that is that when we put it in the torque test that was actually very surprising that it didn't actually cut down very far did it yeah no, that's I mean, I not very that's scientific is it no but it's I initial it talk, could be it? a yeah it could be an overload yeah, connection on there as well it could well be yeah you know but as you know anything that is going to pretty much go through anything you put in front of it, it, it is it? and obviously with the other battery options bigger back power batteries and things like that you've got the possibilities are endless with it but yeah if i was going out pruning apple trees or something i was going to do a lot of pruning in a in a day that is the tool that I would pick yeah. because you haven't got to keep changing batteries. You've, you know it's going to get through everything you want to get through. And yeah, I think it's a great, great tool. So there you go, guys. That is the newest and hottest product in the handheld pruner sector. Well, as a friend of mine says, Billy Jane's on! So we're Machinery Nation and we bring you videos every Tuesday and Friday all about tools and machinery. So please consider subscribing, hit the like button, ding the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio!